So we found some chaga, now what do we do with it? Well, we can use it for fire tinder, I suppose. I could just leave it down there in the drying rack and uh, cut it up and use it for tinder. But I always wanted to try chaga tea, so in today's episode, chaga tea, here at Black Squirrel Bushcraft. Stay tuned. So I'm starting with about 20 ounces of water in my uh, my solo stove pot. And the reason I'm using the solo stove pot as opposed to a conventional pot is because it's narrower and I can get more liquid over the top of the shaga as opposed to a wider pot and I'd just have to use more liquid. So Instead of you following the entire boiling process, uh, I'm simply going to add the shaga and then you can just see it fast forward how it boils and how the water color changes. So I've simply just taken the shaga and just brushed them off. I'm just going to add them right to the water. Now they'll float for a little bit, I think, until uh, until they absorb some more of the water and then we'll see what happens. Okay, so sit back and watch the fun while we go into fast forward. Okay, so I think we have it where we want it. It's been on there about 10 minutes or so, boiling. Uh, you notice I don't have it a, on a huge boil. It's like just above a simmer, almost like a, a, a light rolling boil. So I'm just going to turn the heat off. So ten or, ten or, once it got to a boil, it was about 10 or, 10 or so minutes. So it's, you can almost see to the bottom, or you can see to the bottom, it's like a kind of weak coffee or extra strong tea. So I'm just going to take my cup, and I have this, uh, these are really cool. I'm going to leave a link below as to where you can get one of these. This is a, just an individual cup, Finum, F-I-N-U-M, uh, strainer. They call it a tea basket but you can put coffee or tea or whatever in there. And I'm just going to put that in there to uh, just kind of strain out the bits. And that's one of the reasons I like this pot is it's because of the spout. So I'm going to take that and put that aside. It smells like it almost has a mapley, like a maple syrup if you were to walk into a sugar shack in the spring and you smell that, um, you know, that initial uh, sap boiling off that they have when they're doing maple syrup. That's what it smells like right now. It's strange because I, I expected something a little bit different, more, I don't know, birch beer-like, I guess. 
So I'm just going to take these the chaga chunks back out now. In theory, you can use these more than once. And when when you get done using them, and you can tell when they're done when you boil them and nothing really comes out of them, I guess. These will dry, and then I'll slice them up for um, fire tinder, which is going to be in our next section. So we're going to head on over to the table and uh, try it out. All right. So again, use the basket to get the little bits and pieces out. And it's normal for you to see like little bits of bark or whatever on the bottom of the pot. That's why you use the strainer. I don't, I don't know that I would use a piece of cheesecloth whether or not that that would get it out. I would stick with a coffee strainer of some sort. You could probably use a coffee filter, a paper filter, and put it in a some sort of fine mesh basket too. You could probably do that. And I have some maple syrup here that I'm going to sweeten it with, but I'm not going to do that until I have a taste of it. So, cheers. It does, it just smells like, God, I hate to be a sap. Did I just say that? Anyway, it does smell like the forest a little bit, but more of a, more of a, like a maple, between maple syrup and birch beer. Sort of an in-between smell. And birch beer, boy, I'll tell you, sometimes smells set off memories in my head, and birch beer is one of them, so. That's nice. You know, if you like um, black tea, oolong tea, um, wow, that's nice. I sort of get the idea why people get a, get in the habit of drinking this though. It's really nice. It's sort of a, a kind of a cross between, you know, it's got a little coffee flavor to it too. Sort of like a not like a not a weak coffee, but not a real strong coffee, but an, like a black tea, sort of a medium to high strength black tea, but with that with that smell in it. That's nice. I could really get into the drinking this because I drink tea every day uh, without any sugar or milk or anything like that. So this is this is definitely a good filling. Anyway, so if you find a piece of chaga, you can cut up the chunks like I you you saw there. I had a couple of chunks, a little bit bigger than a golf ball. I put it in about 20 ounces of water brought it to a slow boil, you know, bring it up gently. I put it on the smallest burner I had so the heat would come up gently and not, not like real hard. Uh, once it's to a boil, I just kept looking in the pot to check the color. And as soon as it got to a, like a dark tea color, that's when I stopped the process. And I wish you could see this. I don't know that I could bend this down without jerking the camera too much. I don't know if you can see the color on that at all. I know. All right. All right. So there you have it. Anyway, hope you try it. And uh, if you have any questions, leave it the uh, the comments down below. And um, if you like the video, hit the like button. And by all means, if you want to see our future videos, uh, hit the subscribe button. That way, you get notifications when the newest one comes up. I'm also on Facebook. BlackSquirrelBushcraft.com or Black Squirrel Bushcraft on Facebook. And uh, next video is going to be our fire series. So until next time, cheers and uh, take care.